Wow, it's like being at an Indian wedding. <laughs> well, the first thing I should say is, I'm sorry, the hand dryer's not working. So, um, how do I follow Richard? Richard, you need a bit more energy in your presentation, but we can perhaps uh, talk about that later. <laughs> so, um, the first thing I should do is, actually, I went to a wedding about three weeks ago, and it was uh, a friend of mine, it was his fourth wedding. He obviously likes wedding cake. And... Uh, <laughs> He said, um, the best man stood up, and the best man stood up and made his speech, and he said, um, I apologize, some of you will have heard this speech three times before. <laughs> well, it, it was all downhill from there. Uh, the reason I mention that is because I, I, I was lucky enough to actually work with about uh, 20, 20 or so. Can you just put your hands up so I know where you are? The, the people that I've worked with this week. Fabulous, fantastic. So I apologize, you'll have probably heard some of this already. So uh, I'll just make my apologies and off we go. Um, so I'm going to be talking about angel investing, and I'm an accidental angel investor. Um, so, and you can tell from my presentation style, I'm, I'm not digital, because it's old-fashioned PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to talk about, I can't actually see the first thing that was on there. So that's, uh, that's the first failure. So I'm going to talk about uh, how I got to South Africa, in a way, very, very quickly, how I got here. And then the observations I've made between South Africa. It's, it's very interesting. Lots of people ask me, what differences do you notice? What differences do you notice? And when you've only been um, here a week, I mean, I, I like to think I'm intelligent, but a week probably doesn't give you enough time to actually um, suss out how South Africa is very different from, say, Canada, where I do a lot of work in London. And you can probably tell from my accent that I'm actually not from uh, Cape Town. I'm actually from Johannesburg. But, um, <laughs> but there... There you go. So my route to South Africa started with, I'm a salesperson by background. So I've always been in sales. So ever since I left university, my very first job was actually selling um, um, cakes for Mr. Kipling. Before then, I did start a business doing selling samosas when I was 14, and just selling samosas, which my parents were making. And uh, I didn't tell my parents I was selling the samosas. They thought I was making loads of new friends. Uh, I was selling them, so, so I learned loads of lessons there. You know, honesty and integrity is quite important, otherwise you get beaten up. <laughs> so I, uh, I was a salesperson, and then I was lucky enough, I did an MBA, and then after my MBA, I was, um, my last job was sales and marketing director at Ernst & Young, uh, and I managed the entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial services. And I ran the Entrepreneur of the Year program, and that was a fantastic education, fantastic education. And then I became an accidental angel investor, one of the companies I started um, working with, I, um, I started investing, and then the unthinkable happened. Within seven months of me investing in my first startup, it IPO'd. Uh, so I did very well, and I thought, this is so easy. And the average, the actual stats in, in London, uh, in, in the US actually, for successful exits, as in an IPO exit, is 3%. Only 3% of your investments will lead to an IPO. So ever since then, I've been rapidly trying to catch up with the average, and uh, I, I've been managing. So I've done loads of, so I learned all the wrong lessons from my angel investing, and uh, made loads and loads of deals, which, um, which I, uh, I, I did about 20 investments in about six years. And um, you know, I'll tell you the stats afterwards, of, you know, in terms of the companies I've exited from, the ones I'm still in, and my failures. So I'll share that with you. Uh, but then after 20 deals and losing lots of money, I realized nobody actually quite tells you the truth about angel investing. Now, angel investing is very much like marriage. It's um, hope over statistical reality. And <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true for South Africa. I'm just talking about, I know you guys are slightly different from us, um, uh, sadly, in, in, in London. And we're all still uh, celebrating the, uh, the royal wedding. Um, so I've, I've done uh, 20 deals. And then I basically started a blog, businessangelblog.com. And what I wanted to do was actually share my honest lessons. I didn't want to share the thing that we talk, you know, that everybody says, wow, this is great, I'm awesome. Because every time you meet an entrepreneur who's been very, very successful, most of them, when they're actually very uh, honest with you, they say, actually, I'm, you know, my success was accidental. And, and I just happened to be doing this. Yes, we did have a plan, but actually what happened and what the plan was were two very different things. So I started writing the blog. And then what happened was some Canadians actually picked up on my blog. Uh, and they started actually um, reading my blog and reposting it. And then I was invited to speak at a conference in Canada. As simple as that. And um, that was about October 08, I was asked to speak. And then I went back there in May 09, and I started doing some work for the uh, Canadian government. Uh, obviously, because I have an accent, you know, somebody actually said, Oliver alluded to it earlier, uh, what's the definition of an expert? Somebody with a foreign accent. I think there's actually a lot of truth in that. There's, there's a lot of truth in that, especially if you have an English accent. It seems to, seems to work, or so I'm told. 
And then I um, ended up working uh, with the Canadian government and doing lots of deals, working across Canada. And I ended up investing in about five companies there. And the companies are doing really, really well. So I'm really, really pleased. And then my interaction with South Africa, the story about how I'm here. Because of my work in Canada and the blog, I got invited to a mentor at a Seed Camp in London. And I met one of the great companies from here, Patrick Caton. Where are you, Patrick? Patrick, there he is. And um, I, uh, thank you, thank you for saving my blushes. And um, Patrick actually was one of the companies I mentored uh, when I was in London. And uh, you know, Patrick and I got on, and Patrick said, um, oh, "There you are. Uh, why don't you come to um, uh, Why don't you come to South Africa?" And I said, "I'd love to. I've never been to Africa before, so this is my first time ever to Africa." And everyone keeps telling me that this isn't Africa. Cape Town does not represent Africa. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm totally hooked. So I've fallen in love with the place totally. And. Um, uh, Old Mutual sponsored me to come down here. The Ramp Foundation sponsored me to come down and run this workshop and, and be here today. So, I'm, so that, that's why I'm here. So that's my route to South Africa. So what do I do now? Very quickly, I run a business called, uh, I co-founded a business called Flight and Partners, which is a fund management business. And what we do is we actually buy businesses which are, are failing, which are virtually failing. And we try to turn them around. And uh, we're not at the 310 billion uh, stage. Uh, we've only just started, but we are managing currently 20 million at the moment. Um, and there's a business called Spring Leads as well. And what I love doing, I really, really love uh, traveling. And um, I run a course called From Mind to Market, which is the course that I run here. And I run Help with Sales. And I love investing in different, it's really, really cool to just see different companies, different cultures, and then invest. And then you find that entrepreneurs are all the same. Entrepreneurs are exactly the same, other than in Poland. Poland is very, very unique, but uh, very, very unique. I gave a presentation. My last presentation, actually, I gave in Poland. I actually said to somebody, oh, how was the presentation? It did not start too good, but I'm glad I stayed. No, 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 uh, it didn't start too good, but it got better. I said, well, I'm, I'm really glad you stayed. I had to. It was my job. And so, <laughs> so that was from the lead sponsor. So that's, how, how that, that's the precedent. In terms of my investing, some stats for you. I've actually, as I said, I've now done 25 deals. Ten are still active. I'm on the board of four of them. I don't think you can actually do more than six or seven. Uh, you can't sit on more than six or seven boards at any one time unless you're really super duper at managing your time. I've had four exits, and by exits I mean successful exits, and 12 failures. So 12 failures out of 25. Statistically, you're much more likely to lose your money from angel investing than make it. And the one thing we really have going for us in England, which I don't think you've got in South Africa yet, and you desperately need to have, is a tax system which favors angel investing. In, in the UK, we have something called the Enterprise Investment Scheme, which basically means that if you invest up to two million pounds a year, uh, up to, so I'm not in that stage at all, but uh, if I invest, say, 100,000 in angel investments, I get 30% back straight away off my tax bill. And then, if I hold those shares for three years, uh, after three years, the gains, all the income, all the gain becomes completely free of any tax. And if you lose your money, which you're statistically likely to do, you then get income tax relief on your losses. So your loss uh, amount is about, at risk capital becomes about 35%. So it's a really, really advantage, advantageous thing. And uh, in uh, Canada, they have similar regional tax credit things. I think the one thing I would say to South Africa is you desperately need to do something like that. But I'm jumping ahead. My observations, and this is coming from someone who's never been to South Africa before, okay, so I've only ever based all of my assumptions, all of these assumptions, I'm just trying to be very honest, is um, um, just based on media and news, etc. And the thing that really shocked me firstly was how nice you guys are. You guys are really, really nice. I've, I've not been left on my own for more than five minutes. Um, so, so, so thank you. And you guys really get the, uh, get the idea of uh, super coaching, so, so thank you. And the other thing is, one of the things I did on the course was I actually offered a prize, um, which was, this is about leveraging. As an entrepreneur, you're always leveraging. The prize was you got one-to-one -one coaching with me for half an hour. Uh, and loads of people put their hands up and said, yeah, we'll take that, we'll take that. Uh, but you had to give me a lift uh, back to C Point to do that from here. <laughs> and what was, what was really interesting was all of the entrepreneurs who I was with, none of them actually uh, really got any coaching. They just wanted to keep telling me how much they loved uh, Love South Africa, and they love the area. They kept showing me, and this is this. Have you been to Table Mountain yet? Have you been to Cape Point? Um, first time I've ever seen dolphins uh, was this week. First time I've seen baboons was this week. Um, first time I saw um, what else did I see? What else did I, penguins. So that was all. So that's, for me, that's like wow. That's like really really cool. <laughs> Any, anyone's uh, been following my tweets? You know, you see loads of people. Just I'm just tweeting about penguins and dolphins at the moment. And, and the other thing is, one of the things I noticed, and it's a really easy thing to do, uh, is to always blame government. 
uh, and to say the government's not supportive, the agencies aren't here. The little interaction I've had, and it is very little interaction, I think you've got some very, very committed, talented people trying their best to, to make this you know, angel space, this entrepreneurial space, succeed. So it's too easy sometimes to just say, uh, you know, government doesn't work uh, or government isn't here to help. And it's very interesting, Canada, you've got very distinctive cultures within Canada. You've got Western Canada and Eastern Canada. And if you're in West Canada, you, you can tell a joke, which is, um, hi, I'm from government, how can I help? And everybody laughs at that because they hate government in Western Canada. They just hate government. In Eastern Canada, you tell the same thing. Hi, I'm from government, how can I help? And they don't think it's a joke. They say, well, you could do this, you can do this, you could do this. So it's a really different mindset. And I just think, I think you've just got to be careful of not dropping into the everything that government does is bad, everything that private sector does is good. It's a beautiful combination of both. And then I've also noticed that entrepreneurs, like I said, are the same everywhere. You're full of energy, you're very, very young. It's really weird being one of the, um, you know, I'm 40 now. And it's very strange to come to a conference where there are so many, I've never talked to this many people before, ever. And I'm probably one of the oldest guys in the room. And that is like really, really weird for me. That is really weird. Uh, so that, that's quite scary. And you meet all these uh, uh, angel investors and, and people are running VCs and they're like 32 and they look 14, Justin. And, and, <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and they, uh, so I, I just find that really, really cool. Really, really cool, that, 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 that whole kind of space. And I think what I have noticed is you're, you're very challenging. So one of the things I noticed on the course was, you, and, and even just in five-minute conversations I've had with people, you really do challenge people's thinking and you don't just passively receive stuff. If you're not happy about something, you will say, um, you, know, you know, what is it you're doing? Other things I've noticed about South Africans is um, you're, you're forced. The, one of the great things about South Africa is, I think, because your domestic market is so small, you are forced to think global like Canada. Canada has this massive country <laughs> to its south, not Mexico, but uh, the United States. And they, they are forced to think, how can we, whatever product we do, how can we uh, leverage, how can we be global? And I don't think you could actually have an investable proposition from an angel point of view unless it has truly addresses a global market. And that's one thing I think going in your favor in terms of the entrepreneurship uh, that, that you could display. And it's interesting that you're thinking about, you know, even with, within South Africa, it's interesting today how much, how much of the presentation focuses on Africa, the continent of Africa, the first presentation we had. And uh, what really amazed me was um, when, you, when you go to the UK, the UK hates to be reminded that we're part of Europe. We, we absolutely hate it. I don't know how many of you have been to the UK and experienced that. We're, we're, we are Europhobes, and we hate being reminded that we're part of Europe, and we think very insular. Uh, so it's very interesting to see that. So what are the lessons I've learned? And again, I'm a bit nervous about this uh, because um, I, I, I just think I've only been here uh, you know, less than a week, actually. No, a week today. So just take what I say with a pinch of salt. I think the one thing that is lacking that I've seen is pipeline. And what I mean by a pipeline is the various stages that lead to successful entrepreneurship. I think, for example, this, uh, this initiative here, Net Profit, is a fantastic start to it. And you've got some really good companies like Old Mutual buying into this and really helping, trying to reignite and make something great happen. So that's great, great to see. But what I mean by pipeline is you don't actually, one of the things I get tired of hearing, really tired of hearing, and I hear it everywhere, is there's no money. No, there, no, no, there really is no money. There is money, and you hear that everywhere. You hear that in London, you hear that in Canada, you hear that in Poland, and I'm hearing it here as well. I, as an angel, I'll tell you, the number one request I get from my other angel friends is, have you seen any good deals? I can't see any good deals. The deals simply aren't good enough for a lot of investors. And I think, you know, rather than just looking at that simplistically, I think you need to take a step back and say, the pipeline doesn't exist to create good investable deals. So one of the things I think are, that I certainly share that, and loads of people are aware of that. And I think one of the things you, you, you could do is run something like investor boot camps, where you actually get companies investment ready. And then you create those investment-ready companies, and then the angels will follow. The angels will follow. There are lots of people in Cape Town. I've seen the houses. There are lots of people with lots and lots of money who would consider angel investing. It's just they don't have a... Angel investing is very, very scary. And you also need to run angel investor training. Just because someone's rich doesn't mean they necessarily understand the whole angel investing space. So I think you need to run training sessions on how to become an angel. I wish somebody had told me that, because I think a lot of the crap things I invested in 
I probably wouldn't have invested in had I been made more aware of the risks and pitfalls. So I think there's a need to do that. There's a need to um, do this boot camp, create some really good investable deals. I'd be very interested in investing in, in, in South Africa, very interesting, if I saw the right deal with the right management teams, et cetera, et cetera. And then the angel networks will create themselves out of that. They, re they really, really will. And you want to run angel networks. If you're looking for examples, I'd look at uh, the NACO, which is the Canadian model, rather than the European model. In North America, angel networks are very much angel networks run by angels for angels and for entrepreneurs, whereas the European, it's, it's a slightly different model. So I'd do that. And then what these angel networks will do is these angel networks will create fantastic deal flow for the VCs. And then from those deal flows, you'll hopefully get you know, some successful exits, and then that just goes back into the system. So I think those are my, thing, uh, th those are my observations. And then obviously um, the, uh, the tax incentives as well. You really need to address that because angel investing is so risky, and at the moment it's still relatively unproven in, in this part of the world. So I think investors do need some um, um, tax incentives to help them make that very, very risky, uh, risky investment. And what else, uh, what else doesn't help is at the moment that the, I think your interest rates are so high, and having such a high interest rate means that the risk-free rate of return is obviously very, very high. So an angel looking at making a high-risk thing, the return they expect is going to obviously be that much higher. So my, my, my next thing is, please have me back. I, I'm ashamed, please. I'd love to come back. Any excuse to come back, I would love to. And I, I've seen some great stuff here. I mean, so the companies I've seen, I really think, um, you know, there are some of the companies that I thought I, I was very, very close to actually having uh, investment conversations with because I just think there were one or two pieces missing for me, and I, I've made them aware of that. But I think certainly there were some very, very investable companies here. And I would, uh, as I said, love to, if, there, if there's anything that I can do to help set up the ecosystem, be happy to. But I think that's something that, you know, you all know. And the other thing about South Africa, how many of you actually have li uh, been abroad for more than a month? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the one thing you have is you're not, you're not insular. You do the same thing in London, surprisingly. A lot of people haven't done that. So I think one of the things uh, you've got going is you are very, very multinational in terms of the way you see the world. You've been there, you've experienced it, et cetera. Loads of people, have, I'm not surprised people come back to Cape Town. You know, just, just having been here a week, just seeing this stunning, stunning beauty. So that, those are my things. I think you need, to, you need to set up an ecosystem. And there are loads of people here who are so committed, so committed. There's so many initiatives, uh, not-for-profit initiatives, where people just want to help set up that system. Thank you. That is my presentation. Thank you.